Thank you very much for coming. We are core eight, which is important for this special meeting. Um, I mean, this is a very welcome day. I mean, it's lovely to have two very worthy people. Uh, one's a group proposed for the freedom of the city. So what I would like to do is first remind you, as always, can you check that your phones are either silent or are switched off? Speak into the microphones when you are speaking. It is being filmed and uh, broadcast on the web by Sharon there. Um, and you know, as with the full council, if you leave during the meeting, you must indicate if you're leaving for good, but otherwise you can come and go. And uh, we hope to go to the normal council agenda after this. So if we're doing the special meeting, <laughs> thank you. Um, can we please have any apologies, Alice? Thank you. Um, we have Councillor Humberstone, Councillor Landon Mills, and Councillor Ross Smith. Does, anybody, does anyone know of any further apologies, Catherine? Yes, um, Andrew Gant will be joining us uh, later after about six o'clock. Thank you. Any others? No, thank you. That is noted. Um, Oh, sorry, Susan. Yes, I mean, I think there are a number of uh, councillors who would have wanted to send their apologies for this meeting because they aren't able to make this particular time. Uh, and Councillor Ed Turner is one. Uh, Councillor Hosni uh, Jafari Marbini, uh, I recollect, was another. Um, and unfortunately, I can't remember the whole list, so maybe we perhaps could supply them afterwards. Uh, so if that's, if that's OK, it's part of the minutes. Thank you. I, I know this is earlier than usual, so people with other things to do, it's, it's very uh, well understood. Um, so I'm going to invite you, in fact, well, first, declarations of interest. See none. So may I invite you, leader, please, to propose the motion. Do we have a seconder, by the way? I've got several hands up. Uh, I will invite maybe you, Chris, to be the seconder. Thank you. It's on the agenda, Lord Mayor, for the seconder is Councillor Jarvis. If I, if I may, I'll start by proposing. <laughs> uh, so, um, in, in accordance with Section 249 of the Local Government Act of 1972, I, I would very much like to propose uh, Baroness Frances O'Grady uh, to receive the Freedom of the City of Oxford. As a, as a proud trade unionist and a proud councillor for Wood Farm, which is part of the Churchill Ward, it is my honour and privilege to propose this inspiring daughter of our city, Baroness Frances O'Grady of Upper Holloway and Wood Farm, to receive our highest honour, which is the freedom of the city of Oxford. Baroness O'Grady was born in Wood Farm and attended Wood Farm Primary School and then the now closed Mill and Ford School in Headington. I last actually saw Frances in person at a talk she gave at Ruskin College when she was reminiscing with a number of our councillors over times in Oxford. After attending Manchester University, Baroness O'Grady moved to London where she worked for the Transport and General Workers' Union, the TGWU, and from 1994, the TUC. She became Deputy General of the TUC in 2003 and then in 2012 became General Secretary, the first woman ever to hold the post and she stepped down from that role in 2022, just at the end of last year. Baroness O'Grady, as some of you will know, comes from a family of trade unionists. Um, her Dublin grandfather was a founder member of the Irish Transport and General Workers' Union, and her father, Jim O'Grady, was a shop steward at the British Leyland Car Plant in Cowley, now the mini plant Oxford. On 9th of December 2022, as part of the 2022 Special Honours, she received a life peerage and was created Baroness O'Grady of Upper Holloway and Wood Farm, Oxford, recognising her roots in our city. In Oxford and on Oxford City Council, we are proud of our support of trade unionism and the campaigns they have fought on behalf of all of us for all workers' rights and fair pay. These are causes that are dear to our hearts and ones that we are also keen to support in practical ways with good trade union relationships and are campaigning for both wider trade union membership 
and also our work on the Oxford Living Wage. I would like to commend Baroness Frances O'Grady for her work on behalf of all, our, of all workers, not just in our city, of course, but as General Secretary of the TUC on a national basis, a job she did extremely ably. So I am delighted to propose her and look forward to seeing her again at our more ceremonial meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chris, do you want to speak a seconder? Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Brown for uh, proposing and for those words. So you could hardly find a more apt moment in time to be seconding a motion to confer the honour of freedom of the city on an outgoing General Secretary of the Trade Union Congress. Uh, so in the last year, obviously, the trade union movement has been more present in the consciousness of this country than any point in my lifetime. But likewise, never in my lifetime has trade unionism been under such concerted attack. And it's important, I think, to remember that the trade union movement is one of the most important elements of civil society and one of the most significant defenders of liberty and freedom, not just in our country, but across the world. And Francis O'Grady is a towering and remarkable figure of that movement. Trade unionism, as Councillor Brown has already said, has always been in her blood. Raised as the daughter of a British Leyland shop steward in Cowley, her grandfather was a founding member of the Irish Transport and General Workers Union. She went on to make history when she became the first woman to become General Secretary of the TUC. And as the public face of trade unionism for a decade, O'Grady has been a fierce, fearless and unrelenting advocate for working people. Her achievements are long and numerous and they are shaped by the profound social, political and economic changes this country has faced in that time. In the aftermath of the financial crash, it was O'Grady that was central to shifting the public narrative on the flawed logic of austerity and relentless in defending workers against the scourges of precarious work, zero-hours contracts and fake self-employment. As the climate crisis has become ever more urgent, O'Grady has led the trade union movement at a time when it has become one of the most important voices calling for a just transition to a zero-carbon economy built around good, green, unionised jobs. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, the TUC was key to winning concessions from the government and protections for workers. There would have been no furlough scheme without the TUC, and there would have been no furlough scheme without the fearless and fierce negotiations of Francis O'Grady. Now, at its best, our city is one which is pioneering, radical, and stands up against injustice. And as a child of Oxford, Francis O'Grady has all of those characteristics. Pioneering in her approach to trade unionism, radical in the fight she fought for working people, and for every single day she dedicated to the trade union movement, she stood up to the injustice of exploitation, low pay, and workplace abuse. It's an honour to be second in this motion, and I hope everyone in this chamber will vote to grant Francis O'Grady freedom of the city of Oxford. Thank you for two rousing speeches. Does anyone else wish to speak, or may we proceed directly to vote on this proposal? I see no hands raised. Those in favour? Those against? It's carried unanimously. Thank you very much indeed. Um, now we proceed to the next proposal of Freedom of the City, which I believe Louise is going to move. Would you like to introduce it, please? I'll try and do it standing up, but if you can't hear me, I'll sit down. Um, so today, uh, welcome everyone. We're proposing to bestow the freedom of the city onto the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre. Uh, we're often giving the freedom of the city for improving lives, but it's not often that we give it for extending lives and for saving lives. And in this case, we're not talking about saving just a few lives, but millions upon millions of lives. Uh, the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre was established in 2007. It's a partnership between Oxford University Hospitals, NHS Foundation Trust, and the University of Oxford. And it brings together academics and clinicians uh, who translate the scientific breakthroughs into potential new treatments. Um, the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre is known around the world for its key role in the development of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine and for identifying possible treatments for severe COVID-19. But we should remember that it may, may have been the COVID pandemic that thrust them into the limelight, but the BRC has produced transformative treatments for all sorts of things. 
stroke, cardiovascular disease, cancer, many different infectious diseases, for example. And their work is having a huge and beneficial impact on patients, both in Oxfordshire, who are often the first to have access to new treatments, but also nationally and internationally. Um, it's a leading centre in new technologies, such as gene therapy and the use of artificial intelligence in diagnostics. They are right at the forefront of healthcare, and this happens because they're an academic healthcare research centre embedded in one of our two fantastic universities and working in partnership with the NHS. Sometimes we're giving freedom of city to someone who is born and bred here in Oxford and who's <coughs> gone on to do great things. But this time, we're giving it to people from all over the world who've come to work in Oxford. I'm a scientist in a different discipline, but I know that if you take any lab of 20 or so people, you'll probably find more than 15 different nationalities there. So this is going to be recognising people probably from five, <coughs> all five continents of the world. Um, and this award is also, importantly, for the many ordinary citizens of Oxford who get involved in clinical trials who volunteer to trek up to the JR every few weeks and give a blood sample or do some tests. And often, they'll often be doing this over several years and often with no benefit <coughs> to themselves. But they do it because they know it will help push back the boundaries of human knowledge and improve treatment and care for everyone. So this is award, it's about a, it is for the genius of some extraordinary people whose brains are behind the incredible scientific advances. But it's also, I'd like to say, about the people who wash the test tubes. Although, to be fair, there are not that many test tubes involved in science anymore. But um, television always likes to show you pictures of people pipetting small quantities of colourless liquid around. But someone had to sterilise those pipette tips. Someone had to order them. Someone had to swab down the bench afterwards. Someone had to hold their arm out, give the blood sample that's being tested there. Someone had to write the grant application. Science really is a team effort. Okay, and, and today we are recognising that whole team. So the researchers and developers at the Oxford BRC, as we know, saved more than six million lives by producing the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. And I don't know about you, but I have a little swell of pride every time I read about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in the press or hear it mentioned on the radio. And Louise, can you try to be Last quick? paragraph. This was something really special, something that was about, about the best of humanity. It combined the work and the brains of the BRC with the clinical excellence of the NHS, with the volunteers amongst our citizens who put themselves forward to prove it was safe and effective. And let's not forget AstraZeneca, who put aside their profit margin and got 26 va produ vaccine production centres up and running worldwide to get this vaccine out at an incredible speed. This is a massive thank you from everyone in Oxford whose lives the BRC have saved or improved and whose loved ones you've helped. Awarding the freedom of the city is the highest honour Oxford City Council can bestow, but I think the rest of the planet would probably join us for a round of applause. Okay. Chris, Thank your turn to second it, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, you, you'll, you'll be happy to know I think I've undershot the word count. Um, so uh, before, uh, before I was a councillor, uh, I, I was also an academic, and I can confirm that I've seen the usage of at least one test tube. But in that context, it was remarkable to see dozens of incredible ideas that weren't yet able to do anybody tangible good uh, because people needed to sit down and work out the tangly practicalities of the matter. And more lately, uh, I've these days work as an engineer, uh, and you see the opposite side of that problem. You see all the places where it would be useful, but it needs to be made useful. That's why it's so important to have dedicated people bridging the gap, turning the possible into reality, and why it gives me great pride to share a city with teams that are realizing incredible advances on our doorstep. Even setting the incredible work regarding COVID aside, there's so many strands of work here that could make a revolutionary difference. From detecting the onset of cancer, to hacking faulty genes in situ to prevent degenerative diseases, to understanding the onset and course of diabetes, to arresting the progress of Parkinson's disease. There are dozens of pro projects happening right now, not 10 miles away from us, that will alleviate suffering and save lives. For all of these reasons, it gives me great pleasure to second and support that the honorary freedom of the city be conferred upon the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre, and I hope that everybody will support it. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, again, if anybody wants to speak, please indicate now. Otherwise, I suggest we proceed to a vote. I don't see any hands raised. So those in favor? Against? Again, carried unanimously. Well done. I think we should be proud as a city. I'm, in fact, the lucky one who's going to read the statements of acceptance. So you first must pretend I'm Francis O'Grady, which, uh, sadly, I cannot pretend, but uh, I'm, it goes as follows. I'm deeply honoured to have been nominated for the freedom of the city of Oxford, the place of my birth, and for the recognition that this affords to the values which we share. I feel so proud to be offered this freedom by Oxford City Council, which has been a pioneer of decent homes for everyone, a greener climate and dignity at work, not least through the introduction of the groundbreaking Oxford Living Wage. I would like to thank dedicated councillors, council staff and workforce unions for the work that you do week in, week out to make Oxford a better place to live and work. I personally have a lot to thank Oxford for. I was born on Wood Farm Estate and extended, attended Wood Farm Primary School where, thanks to generations of wonderful teachers and support staff, children from family backgrounds like mine continue to get the start in life that every child in our country should enjoy. And when I was a young trade unionist, Oxford City Council awarded a grant to help me study part-time for a certificate in industrial relations and trade union studies. That gave me the confidence to become a workplace rep and later to apply for a full-time position at the Transport and General Workers Union before then joining the TUC. As TUC General Secretary during the pandemic, I am proud to have led a trade union movement that played a key role in negotiating the furlough scheme, which saved over a million livelihoods and which, thanks to our workplace reps and officers, delivered national health and safety standards at work. I have been privileged to represent working people on the pandemic front line, from nurses working long shifts on COVID wards to social care professionals who looked after our loved ones and transport supermarket and delivery workers who kept us safe and fed. Women and men from every race and religion putting their own health on the line for the rest of us. They taught us the true value of labor. Like many others, I have devoted my working life to advancing workplace and social justice justice in this country and around the world. I know that this is a cause which millions of people who make up our movement share. And on that basis, I am delighted to accept the honor that you have decided to award today. Thank you. <clears throat> Obviously a very worthy recipient. I'm now reading out the statement of acceptance on behalf of Helen McShane, who's speaking for the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre. I am delighted to accept the freedom of the city of Oxford on behalf of the NIHR Oxford Biomedical Research Centre. The Oxford BRC is a partnership of two important Oxford institutions, the University of Oxford, and Oxford University Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust, a partnership that brings together the very best in academic healthcare research and NHS clinical excellence, and a key element in the thriving clinical academic ecosystem in this city. One of the most important ingredients in our success is the people of Oxford and its surrounding areas. They participate in great numbers in our clinical trials and are increasingly involved in the research that we do, from helping us to identify the areas, areas to focus on to helping design our studies. This helps us to push forward the boundaries of diagnostics, treatment, and care. 
and to ensure our research responds to the needs of the populations we serve. Patients and members of the public from Oxford played an important part during the COVID-19 pandemic, helping us to develop a vaccine quickly, to identify effective treatments, and to understand better our immune response to the virus. They have also been vital in all of our work, helping us to identify at an early stage people at risk of heart attack, stroke, or Parkinson's disease, improving how we carry out knee surgery, or developing genetic therapy to prevent blindness. For me, the success of our BRC is inseparable from the fertile environment in which it is located. And this recognition belongs to the whole city. Thank you. So I would like to thank you all unanimously for supporting these two new freedoms of the city. You may have gathered that they will be actually awarded in person on the same day as the next mayor making. And uh, so we look forward to that. And in the meantime, I wish you, uh, I think that is slow, 10 minutes break before we move to the full council meeting. Thanks a lot.